Welcome to a lesson on the perpendicular bisector theorem converse. The goal is to state and prove the perpendicular bisector theorem converse. So this converse tells us if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then the point is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So for example, if we consider this point here, this converse tells us if it's equidistant from the endpoints, or that this segment here is congruent to this segment here, then this black point must be on the perpendicular bisector. And the same thing would be true for any point that is equidistant from the endpoints. So if we have this point here, where this segment was congruent to this segment, this point would have to be on the perpendicular bisector. Before we write our proof, let's talk about a strategy. Again, if we consider point C, knowing that it's equidistant to the endpoints, or that segment AC is congruent to segment BC, we want to prove this red line is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. What we want to do is prove that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle BCD, and we'll do it using side angle side congruence. If we consider this larger triangle here, we know it would be an isosceles triangle because we have two congruent sides. Therefore, we know the base angles of the triangle would be congruent. So angle A would be congruent to angle B. Next, we'll define D as the midpoint of segment AB, and therefore segment AD would be congruent to segment BD. So by side angle side, these two triangles would be congruent. And then given that angle ADC and angle BDC form a linear pair and are congruent, they must measure 90 degrees. Therefore, line CD would be perpendicular to segment AB. So this proof is a little bit involved, but let's go ahead and see if we can write it up. So we're given that segment AC is congruent to segment CB. We want to prove that line CD is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. So let's go ahead and state the given. Step two, triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. This is by definition of an isosceles triangle. Step three, we know that angle A would be congruent to angle B. This would be by the isosceles triangle theorem. Let's go ahead and mark that. Now for step four, we'll draw the midpoint D on segment AB. And the reason for this is that every segment has a midpoint. So if we define D as the midpoint, we know segment AD would be congruent to segment DB. And this is by definition of a midpoint. So now we have enough information to state that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle BCD by side angle side. So now that we know that these two triangles are congruent, we know that angle ADC and angle BDC would be congruent. The reason is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Notice these two angles also form a linear pair and therefore are supplementary. And by the congruent supplementary angles theorem, we know the measure of angle ADC must equal the measure of angle BDC, which must equal 90 degrees. And again, this is by the congruent 
Supplementary Angles Theorem. So if those two angles measure 90 degrees, we know that line CD is perpendicular to segment AB. This is by definition of perpendicular lines. And now we have enough information to prove that line CD is the perpendicular bisector of AB. Notice how we've shown they intersect and form a right angle, and that segment AD is congruent to segment BD. So it bisects the segment, and it's perpendicular. So it's the perpendicular bisector. And this is by definition of perpendicular bisector. And that's going to do it for this proof. I hope you found this helpful.